Hello, everyone. Um, I don't have a mic, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me well. Um, my name is Melancholia Blackwell. I'm your host today. Um, I would like to welcome you at the Mezipatra Queer Film Festival and today's program here in Svetopad, uh, which is Show Your Shorts. And I don't mean the clothing. I don't want to see that. <laughs> um, Show Your Shorts is all about showing short films by queer filmmakers from all around the world. And uh, the first will be The Call by Marius Saras, um, which is a, one second. Um, the Call is the first Cypriot film with a transgender theme focusing on family relationships. So if you'd like to play the presentation. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mezi Patra, for inviting us. Um, so I'm Marius Psaras. I'm a filmmaker and film scholar. I'm from Cyprus. I'm based in London, where I teach uh, film theory and practice. Uh, my research focuses on contemporary Greek cinema. Uh, you know, the so-called Greek weird wave, Yorgos Lanthimos, etc. So I'm looking at this uh, particular movement from a, a queer point of view. Um, so the call is a very low budget film uh, that has actually uh, surprised us. I've, I've made a couple of shorts, but this one, I think, oh, I think it's definitely the most successful uh, I've ever done so far as it has traveled in many festivals in across Europe, uh, North America, and uh, uh, next stop is Brazil. So, um, uh, so the call is a 10 minute single shot of a phone call. It is inspired by uh, Jean Cocteau's uh, monologue, The Human Voice. Uh, but the phone call here um, explores the vexed relationship between a trans woman and her family. Um, so the woman is receiving a call from her brother who announces to her that their mother has died and that she needs to attend uh, the funeral. Yet uh, there is a catch here. Um, her brother doesn't want her to uh, go to Cyprus to attend the funeral as her old self. But um, not as her new and true self, but as her old self. Um, so as the dialogue progresses, which is essentially a monologue, because we never get to hear um, the words of the brother. Uh, so we learn the details of her own haunting past and her personal struggle um, and journey. Uh, next one, please. Um, the woman has been forced to leave Cyprus because of the social stigma. She has relocated in an obscure uh, European country where she managed to stand on her feet and basically reinvent her life. It's a journey of self-discovery and self-making, of building confidence and a life of one's own. However, her traumatic childhood and strong affective connection with her estranged mother comes to, first to the surface when she is faced with the dilemma that her brother forces upon her. However, it is a false dilemma, because what the brother does not understand is the fact that her femininity is not a matter of changing clothes, but an inner process of embodiment and identification which she has managed to come to terms with, <laughs> accept and embrace. Next one. <coughs> so stylistically, along, along with my DOP, Stefan Metzner, who is a German cinematographer based in Cyprus, we pursued what we call a distanciating mode of filmmaking, with the camera always keeping the audience at a distance. Um, so though the deeply passionate dialogue and acting of uh, Nectarius Theodoru, uh, who is uh, a very famous actor in Cyprus, so these uh, the passionate acting and uh, the dialogue, even though they create an emotional relationship with the viewers, um, the viewers nonetheless never get to see uh, a close-up of her face. Um, 
So in addition, there is no dramatic music in the film, and up until the very end of the film, the, phrase, the frame is half covered by the wall of the corridor. Um, so uh, at, at the end of the corridor, you get to, to get a glimpse of your own uh, kingdom, um, so we, which is over-stylized with uh, colorful uh, furniture and clothes. Um, as Virginia Woolf would say, a room of one's own. Uh, however, um, we, we decided that we needed to keep the contrast between that beautiful, colorful universe and the, um, and the wall which basically uh, reflects uh, the, the claustrophobic uh, society that she's like, in struggle with. Um, so much like um, the trans woman refuses to submit to her brothers uh, or the society's norms and directives, the film refuses access to cinema's pleasure, normative pleasures of desire and identification. So we don't want to exoticize her body, we don't want to fetishize uh, her identity, um, because we don't want the audience to effectively identify with her. We just need uh, the audience to understand her drama, uh, respect her, um, respect her body, her life, her desires, and her space. So, acknowledging the fact that our film could not escape the cis gaze, uh, we had to find a way to give as much space to her as possible to tell her own story, uh, without us interfering, or at least with us interfering as little as possible and also without having the camera manipulating our relationship to her. As the, as the camera finally approaches her towards the end, um, it is only to reveal the beauty of her world and her universe and underscore the antithesis with the emotional remnants of her past, which is effectively the love of her mother. Um, yeah, I'm very happy to experience the, the fact that our film actually was met with um, with uh, success. I mean, in film festivals, it, but most importantly, it drew attention home. Um, and when I say home, I mean uh, Cyprus and Greece, um, because it speaks essentially to the very core of the Greek and the Cypriot societies uh, internalized homophobia and especially transphobia. Especially in Cyprus, trans people are almost invisible, so the call is, as, as you mentioned, is the first uh, Cypriot film that focuses on the experience of a trans person, and uh, I believe that the intention that our film has um, met with uh, from uh, mainstream media, with TV and radio interviews, with uh, interviews on on press and on online media, it, it has at, at last um, given the opportunity to start a conversation in Cyprus uh, about these topics. And um, so it, 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 I think it created a space to start meaningful conversations about uh, trans visibility in Cyprus, which is the, the main reason why we couldn't find there isn't actually a trans actor in Cyprus that we could cast for this film. Um, so we were very adamant to discuss about this uh, casting decision because it is something that we had stru to struggle with. So we needed this conversation to go to, to include issues of trans representation uh, and visibility, human rights and so on. Um, so, the birth of the call, so I'm, I'm going, you know, backwards. Um, so, as a gay man myself growing up in Cyprus, I, of course, I had a, a difficult childhood my, my, myself and a very um, weird relationship with my parents because we, we are still very much in contact with my family and everything. We have actually a perfect relationship right now. Uh, but it was so hard for them and at some at some points it is still hard for them uh, to accept that I'm gay and to um, and these uh, and I, I think uh, many people might relate to that um, 
this um, relationship with my family affected the way I experienced my body, I experienced my identity and my desires. But um, so that was the personal aspect of how the call came to birth. Um, now the important uh, moment it, it was, uh, as, as I told you, I live in London, so I, I met this trans woman from Lebanon who had a very uh, similar experience uh, with the main character in the film. Um, it, and it's when I realized that my story was nothing compared to hers. Um, and also through my studies, I realized that trans activists were uh, actually at the core of the LGBT movement since its inception, especially trans uh, women of color. Um, and I thought it was so strange that I didn't know a single Cypriot trans person and uh, I would like to dedicate this film to them. Now, please allow me to talk very briefly about my new project. Um, so, uh, yes, A Great Silence. A Great Silence is a film about the end of a love affair between two men. Um, I think you can recognize uh, the still from uh, Wong Kar Wai's Happy Together here. So, um, A Great Silence is, is, is going to be again a single act a film, but not a single shot. It's going to be divided in four scenes, um, scatter across uh, 10 or 15 minutes chronologically, so it's not going to be linear narration, uh, to reflect the way memory works. Um, the film starts with a visually and emotionally powerful sex scene. Uh, nothing foreshadows the development of the story, as the frames are filled with striking images of uh, naked male bodies <coughs> literally devouring each other, as if it were the last time. And it was. Uh, the climax reaches a dead end, and the camera closes in on the face of one of them, and his tears are confusing us. Is it lust, or is it melancholy? Um, yeah, I'm not going to reveal more, even though I've written it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yes, and then develops, uh, you know, uh, as I said, non-linearly, um, and we get to know, uh, basically, one of them then announces to the other that they need to break up, and they have this uh, discussion uh, about what went wrong, and we seem to, um, there is violence, the violence dissolves into sex, then yeah, there is a little bit of confusion of what, what's going on until the very last scene when we get to, everything comes together. Um, in, in, this, um, in this film, um, and also um, in the call, um, I didn't write uh, the script myself. I, uh, my co-writer, Avi Lili, is an award-winning poet. And um, together, basically, uh, when it comes to the call, we actually wrote the, um, the questions of the brother. So when we were rehearsing um, with the actor, he knew what he was, uh, she, yeah, the character knew what she was responding to. Um, here again, we with Avi, we are um, responding to each other again. Um, so it's two people, and uh, yes, and this is how we usually work. And then when we finish um, the first draft, we uh, bring it all together to make more sense and to make it more, uh, you know, cinematic. Um, so the, the dialogue will oscillate between um, poetic and lyrical moments and harsh, raw violence, um, language, sorry. Um, uh, a Great Silence is in early development stage. Um, we have started working on the script already, um, developing the dialogue and the characters' backstories. Um, but unlike my previous film, this will not be realist cinema. So I want to ex experiment with lyricism, expressionism, and mix this with characteristics from queer cinema and queer art through the ages. Um, so um, uh, it's 
not going to be a low budget film. <laughs> this one, it cannot be a low budget film because we need to bring on board art directors, designers. Um, uh, we have uh, secured some funding for post production from uh, the Cyprus Ministry of Culture. So right now we are developing funds for um, the production. Um, the premise of uh, A Great Silence is uh, based on two uh, breaking up real life stories. One is mine and one is my best friend's. Mine is the boring one, his is the violent. Um, and also through my own readings about um, love and um, the meaning of love uh, and both um, ancient philosophy and poetry but also contemporary one which is all about deconstructing the notion of love. Um, so in Greek language you have this distinction between eros and agapi. Eros is the more physical and more fleeting aspect of love. Uh, the lust, admiration, infatuation. Agape is a more mature form of love, which includes trust, affection, and deep connection. So we know that gay love is often accused of uh, failing to achieve the deeper levels of agape. And uh, it's not like I, uh, I will try to avert the stereotype, because obviously we need to accept all different forms of love. And uh, fleeting love is, uh, is what um, turn some, some, some people on, so we, we, we should not be judgmental. What, what I really need to understand myself and then convey to the audience is, um, is, uh, is to create an aesthetic uh, cinematic canvas in order to paint the different deaths, the different layers, and also the different anxieties of the love uh, between two men. Of course, this is not two men, it's Kira Knightley here. So, uh, but I just wanted to give you an impression of how the film will start. So think of Joe Wright's Anna Karenina uh, meeting uh, Wong Kar Wai is happy together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marius. I would just like to say that at the end, um, you will have um, space for asking questions. So if you can keep them in mind, and uh, then you'll be able to ask the filmmakers. Um, I'd just like to say that uh, this personally, it's, you know, it's so important to start these discussions, especially in spaces where there are none. So yes, yeah, so thank you for that. And it's, you know, it's like, it's what we need as the whole community, and it's what we are working for. Um, so this is, you know, through film, through media, um, it's a great way to teach people and to, you know, to educate people. So thank you again. Um, right, without further ado, we're going to go to the next film, which is Escaping the Fragile Planet. Um, by Greek filmmaker Thanasis Tim Timpinis. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. I don't know. How <laughs> I don't know Greek. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll let you speak. Actually, can I sit here? <laughs> Struggling with the stage right. It's very okay. Uh, then how about there? Yeah. 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 Or, or the sofa. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. So thank you so much for having me. Actually, Mazipatra is uh, the first uh, festival that I get to attend physically and watch my film with the uh, audience after its premiere in Athens, which was physically, but then uh, you know what happened. Everything went online. So I'm very excited about uh, tomorrow and Tuesday. Um, so yeah, I decided to take a different take on today's uh, presentation and uh, like take you uh, uh, a journey through color in my films uh, because uh, color is very important to me uh, while I'm uh, uh, envisioning my film and creating its uh, uh, visual identity. So uh, yes, I'll wait. <laughs> <clears throat> so this is the poster of uh, the film. As you can see, it's very pink <laughs> and very gay. And um, 
So yeah, people have been asking me uh, why pink and um, how did you create uh, the whole pink theme of the, of the film. And I thought it would be interesting to speak about that because we all know that pink is very uh, related to um, queer culture, LGBTQ history for, for many reasons. So yeah, uh, the next one. This is my previous short, it was a long time ago. Uh, in the meantime, I was shooting commercials. <laughs> so yeah, I was uh, kind of lost. Uh, but yeah, it's called Fawns, it means baby deer. And it's a tale, it's uh, about uh, two boys, two lovers. And uh, basically it's a, it's a metaphor um, uh, that compares uh, the love between two gay men and uh, mother and uh, mother deer and her baby. So it's uh, more like a visual poem. It's uh, three minutes long. It's on Vimeo if you want to check it out. The same as promotion. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's, it was shot in, uh, in black and white. Um, yeah, that's that's the tale I refer about. It's uh, it all starts with uh, from a picture of a deer, and then uh, it has a voiceover, and it has a, a non-linear narrative and editing. So it kind of blends um, scenes from men, from the men in bed having uh, sex, and uh, scenes from nature like the deer and uh, leaves and trees and many palettes from from nature. Uh, yes. So uh, I, I I hadn't thought of it like I would I would uh, shoot it in black and white before I show a picture of a tree. I was looking for references from nature um, and textures and leaves, as I told you, and trees. And I came across um, an image like that. This is from the film. It's a close-up of a tree, and uh, it was in black and white. And uh, the texture it was so intense, and uh, it kind of felt magical and I thought maybe I should show the whole thing in, in a black and white then this is how the idea came to my mind and then I thought that it might work uh, why it, it might it would help uh, blending the two words like nature and lovers and since the story itself is blending the two worlds it would be good to create like uh, this uh, whole universe nature and lovers all in black and white. Do I make sense? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Next one. So yeah, and uh, besides of intertwining the two worlds together, the black and white also created this like magic, mystical, magical uh, atmosphere for the film. It was very moody, uh, kind of dark, but um, yeah, it um, uh, emphasized the, the, the tale feeling of it. So, yeah, moving on. So, I, as you can see here, these are the references from, my, from the film uh, that is being screened now, Escaping the Fragile Planet. And this is where there are some of the references. Uh, I decided, as you can see, to turn the, uh, a, a new page. Um, uh, it's all this um, colorful, uh, intense pink, like um, uh, neon uh, cyberpunk aesthetic, futuristic. Because um, the film is a dystopian tale about two men uh, meeting the last world, uh, the last day of the world. So they have one day, uh, they're strangers, and they have one day to uh, have fun, basically, and have like a ca this casual date. And uh, I thought, okay, I should create something happening in the film. And uh, yeah, let's move on. And uh, this is uh, how uh, this is the result uh, that we've created. It's very representative of the film, the steel. Uh, it's combining, as you can see, the um, uh, warm tones coming from outside with the cool tones from from the inside. And um, yes, next one. And uh, yeah, back to the story. Sorry, I'm uh, hungover from yesterday, from last night. <laughs> also, uh, back to the story. What ha what's happening? And it's the end of the world. It's that there is this pink fog that is expanding in the city, and it's toxic and it's killing everything. Uh, more like sci-fi sci vibes. 
and uh, people are locked in their houses and it's forbidden to go outside and you have to wear a mask but it was shot before COVID in 2019 <laughs> oops uh, so the timing was kind of weird um, and actually I wrote the script in 2018 uh, so yeah um, and then why pink for the film um, and why, 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 uh, why, the end of, why the end of the world at, at, uh, in the beginning? I thought that, um, okay, th these two strangers are meeting and they're having a casual date, but um, I should put a ticking clock to their story, like uh, something, they have a limited um, amount of time. And then I thought, why not the end of the world? Uh, because I'm like dramatic like that. <laughs> 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 and uh, then I was thinking of, um, okay, what can happen in, to, to, to destroy the world? And I came across um, a boy uh, lost in a, in, a, in, a, in a fog. And also, um, this, this film is about childhood and how to um, spend your time like being a child, like an innocent child. So I thought, okay, it can be the fog that's destroying the world. And uh, why pink? Because I think it's a romantic story and also a queer story, and also Pink is very reminiscent of the sunrise, which is the end of the day, and the end of the world, and um, yeah, I, and it's also connected, I think, to with uh, polluted skies. Like um, I think in LA, uh, there this they have this crazy color for sunsets because because of the pollution. So I thought, okay, it all makes sense somehow. So, um, what people told me, and I really liked, um, I don't know if it was necessarily my intention, but I think it was the best thing to hear that uh, this ballet created these two, again, worlds, the inside and the outside. The, the right uh, steel is f from the first time they meet, everything is blue, and spoiler alert, this is from the, la the, the left, steel is from the last scene, uh, when everything is monochromatic thing. And this, there is this contrast from outside to inside. And uh, what people have told me is that um, they like the idea that uh, they start from inside, where they feel safe, and then they went outside, uh, where everything is being toxic and unsafe, but they kind of reclaim their own space outside. And they told me that uh, the way they saw it's like a metaphor about queer presence and queer expressions for, for queer people when they're outdoors, be, um, not only uh, inside closed uh, doors. And uh, yeah, I really like the idea that maybe this is a story, although it wasn't necessarily my intention, that this is a story about reclaiming public space. Yes. Uh, now more some technical stuff. Uh, we also used color uh, in the set design, like uh, we created palettes with the flowers and the, uh, colorful backgrounds to uh, enhance the, the happy feeling of it um, and how they are feeling more and more happy in their uh, safe environment that they, they, uh, they created themselves. Um, yeah. So, uh, backstage, um, as you can see, this is the, the girls from the art direction department. They're covering a wall uh, with um, uh, a purple um, material to make it more a more monochromatic uh, palette and also uh, we've uh, placed uh, pink um, nylon papers let's say on, on the windows to create this uh, whole pink atmosphere so we actually shot this uh, in pink it wasn't uh, added in uh, in color grading color grading uh, yeah and this is our sound recording <laughs> So, uh, now about the outdoors, of course for the outdoors we couldn't afford or even manage any way to uh, make the whole city uh, pink and, or foggy because it was summer, it's Athens, it never gets foggy and uh, actually we've shot this, as you can see on the right, it was a flat color and we've shot this early in the morning with no sunlight, no shadows, so we have this flat light that we can add the fog on so it makes sense. And uh, the fog was added digitally, frame by frame. Um, uh, 
uh, we didn't have a huge budget for that, so what we uh, what I had to do is create uh, like one minute and a half of total outdoor scenes uh, because we couldn't afford to have more frames with uh, 3D. And what the VFX artist did it was like uh, 3D mapping the whole uh, place and uh, um, rotoscoping, if you know what that is, it's like a cutout of the figures while they're moving and the camera is moving. So it basically was a whole struggle. <laughs> Okay. And um, to create the fog, uh, that was the part for the fog. And then for the color, uh, we've added a pink tint in color grading uh, to match the indoors that we have the pink uh, light anyway. And that was um, the result. Yeah. Oh, this is the trailer. Can we see it? I hope. So that's a silly game. Um, <laughs> it's a test on BuzzFeed, and uh, it's a test for you to if you can read the words inside the box to see if you can survive a pink apocalyptic day. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a silly game. Uh, yeah, move on. Um, so my next film is called um, Will Be Called. All these are references photos uh, by you. It means uh, still water um, in Louisiana, where there are like uh, alligators inside, and, and uh, the, the, the surface is green. Um, so yeah, again, it's a tale um, about two men, but um, it's a dark story. It's about obsession, being obsessed with uh, the one that you're in love with or obsessed with. And uh, I was also thinking of, uh, I've written the script as a short film, but I've, I'm thinking of expanding it because I think it has uh, the depth to be expanded uh, in more scenes. Um, so yeah, yes. this is the color palette for the film. Uh, as you can see here, I'm uh, obsessed with green, <laughs> a new obsession. Uh, actually, this film won't have su uh, such a strong uh, visual uh, visual identity like the, the previous one. It was totally pink. But I thought to create this, this palette where there are dreamy sequences in, in, in green. Uh, as we know, green is connected with envy, obsession, and it's also a tropical color. Like I think it makes sense for the um, for the environment that, that an alligator lives because. The whole thing I forgot to tell you is a tale about someone being obsessed with someone and also exploring his animalistic uh, side and uh, instincts. So yeah, and also the secondary color will be like brown coming from the hoods and the coming from, of course from the skin tone because it's all about uh, uh, nudity and it also has very intense uh, sex scenes as Myers film. Moving on. Yeah, the refs, this is the Bayou Lake I told you about, this is how, how it's called. It's uh, of course green and uh, again the color palette, I've already uh, talked about that. Yes, moving on. Now what is about the genre, I'm really excited, it doesn't have to do necessarily with the color, but I'm really excited to also create a psychological uh, thriller, homoerotic psychological thriller. I really like when the, um, um, we see more queer characters coming from, from different genres, when, uh, where the stories 
don't necessarily have to do with their struggle as queer people, or they're not necessarily about their queerness, <coughs> yet they are still queer, and that, and that, uh, that I believe is very uh, political, like to normalize queer people in other film genres, like action films, animation films, uh, thrillers, comedy, um, so yeah. I think it was Thank you. Thank you, that was a very lovely presentation. Again, if you have any questions, you can ask them later. And we're going to move on to the next film. It's a short film about three non-binary friends and their carefree lives, which might not be as carefree. Um, it is a Belgian film called At Night We Fly by Helt Jan Bertin. Hello, thank you Mitzi Patra uh, for inviting me and that I can be here. It's my first queer film festival. Um, it's also the film um, that I will talk later about. It's my first professional film in the industry of film festivals, so I'm really happy to be here. So my name is Gertian Redeje, I'm 26 years old and I'm from Belgium. Um, I will talk a little bit about my process, about the film and also because I, it was my master film on uh, student school in Brussels, uh, Lucas School of Arts. So yeah, for me it's a new world, uh, it's all new for me, so I will talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this is a picture from Brussels. Uh, it's on the rooftop of one of the scenes uh, where I this is a uh, scene from the film. Um, so I'm living there now for six years. The film is also playing there, and um, yeah. So <laughs> this is a picture from on uh, my school that we did exercise. Like I say, I was studying on uh, Lucas School of Arts, like five years I did my bachelor there, three years, and then two years I did my master where I made little short films and exercises and uh, I really enjoyed my time there and it was really nice to experience, to learn, um, to become the filmmaker that I'm now. <laughs> so. Um, this is, uh, I see what you don't see, it's not the short film that is played here, but it's the short film that I made in my bachelor year. For me this film is really important for my school career and to search who I was as a film director, what kind of uh, films I want to make. Um, it's about uh, Bavo and Elias that's enjoying the summer holiday and then they're gonna hitchhike to the next place and they will uh, drive with a, a dad and a five years old son and then Bavo um, will be uh, get uh, a little bit yeah not uh, trouble with himself but doubts about himself and his behavior towards others. Um, these are stills. Uh, for me, this was I um, after this film, I was like a little bit lost with myself, who I was, what kind of films I want to make, because I had it difficult because people in my school and next to it put me immediately in a box like, "Oh, you're an LGBTQ filmmaker, a queer filmmaker," and I didn't know if I really was that kind of filmmaker. I'm still searching myself, and I found it difficult as person that they put me immediately again in a box and put a label on me and I was like, no, I don't want that. Um, but then with the film At Night We Fly, um, it was, I'm happy I made this, but for me then this was important to really search myself and also like a tutor say to me, like he was happy when I came with the story about At Night We Fly and that they say to me, like, why you don't ask the same question, but on the opposite to the, then the straight filmmakers in my school or in my class, like, why you make straight films? Then they were always pushing that questions to me, but not thinking self about it. So for me, that's why this film was like, I'm happy I made this film, but it was also really a process for me to uh, search myself and 
Um, that's why I came with the uh, uh, film at Nighty Fly. That's a film poster. So it's about three non-binary friends that create a safe space on the street. Um, and um, yeah, to try to be themselves at last because the real world cannot give it to them. Um, for me, yeah, this is uh, my master film. I'm really happy with this film for my school career and also now my first professional film, what I made. It was really important for me also as film director to, for me it was really like my best film that I made now to really be, stand behind it and um, that I had uh, found myself also at this moment as film director making the short films and um, yeah. Um, and we can watch the trailer uh, of the film that you, if you didn't see it, that you see a little bit of it. That was a trailer. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the dialogues because you think it's shoot in Belgium in Brussels, why it's in English, but for me it's really something of the new generation in Brussels because it's people speaking in Belgium French, German also, but um, most of the time French or Flemish. But in Brussels, because it's so international, everyone speaks now almost English to each other if you don't speak the same language. Um, for me, about at night to fly, about the process was, um, I, I felt like I wanted to make a, a film about friendship, but I didn't know yet who was the correct, uh, who will be the characters, the three uh, friends. And as a film director, I start always from a feeling, um, and then I will go work further on it. And at that time because I was still searching myself also as person, who I am, what, how I identify myself. Um, and then I was start coming in contact with people that were gender fluid or non-binary and it was really inspiring me. And uh, I felt like I had a connection with them, so I felt like, okay, I want to make a film about three non-binary friends because as a child or a teenager, I never saw a film with this kind of uh, characters on the screen and I felt it's important to tell them and also about that they tell about uh, daily life. You, they are the only three characters in my uh, film, there are no binary uh, characters and that was also important for me because I get a lot of questions about it, why we don't have one to, that the binary people can follow with that character but for me it was like, no, make an effort and it's important that these films also uh, exist and stand on screen. And um, yeah, then I start with the casting process and I start the friendship really from the beginning. Like they, they didn't know each other. And then I really create a friendship together with them. Also with the writing process, I write with uh, Arno Delova, is a screenwriter in Brussels. And um, we were writing, I knew where I want to go with the film, but for me it was also important that I will show them realistic, or that they, 
that it's not like, oh, it's now a famous topic, so let's make a film. For me, it was important that they really, the film is of the characters that they will play stand also really close to them, so they play a little bit themselves, but also still someone else. And that was important. And we write, we were sitting around the table talking about the scenes, about the dialogues, and that was my process of the writing. And we practice a lot because also like a lot of scenes are uh, improvisation that we knew like, because they are non-actors, so they never stand uh, before a camera. So for me, it was uh, a way that I really like as film director now to work to to you know the context of the scene, but then you have the freedom, and for them it was really working. Um, so, yeah, and that's why, um, yeah, next. Um, so that are the, I call them my three stars, uh, my superheroes. Um, so yeah, it's for me, it's also a team in this film, it's a safe space. Um, because they are creating it, because I feel like in the community it's really important to save space. Um, and we need it, and we, we will always make one, but then in one snap you can go out and go back on the street and you feel unsafe. And also with them, like, um, it was really important to create it together, the friends under each other, and also with the crew was important. I didn't want, like, toxic masculinity on my set, film set because I don't like it and for me it was important because they were not feeling safe then on a way because they want to get respect and um, so everyone was like if they were going to help me in the crew I say like there is going to be a safe space so we're going to respect each other if you don't do it then yeah not like this but there is a door mm -hmm. of life <laughs> um, so yeah, that was really important to work because the film is about it and I think it's really over all my process and I'm as a person and director addicted to safe space and also I like to create new worlds in a way or to play with it and then with the real, uh, reality and that's also what I did in the film uh, with them and um, yeah. Um, so, with the uh, camera person, uh, Charlie Speckert, um, also there were a lot of women in my film crew and I really liked it. It was, it was my family, to be honest, that moment of, uh, I shoot it one year ago in the summer, uh, yeah, between the corona um, waves of lockdowns, um, it was, yeah, excited to do it. <laughs> Um, but with my camera woman, uh, Charlie uh, Speka, we really went searching how we can tell this story, like how we can get close to them, that people that don't know what is non-binary of them, don't uh, identify them as that, that they still can follow them and maybe stand next to them. So that's why a lot of people think sometimes it's documentary, because of the image, how it's shot. And also because they play a little bit themselves, but also not. So, um, and I really like to play with, uh, with the documentary style, but for me it's really fiction. And um, also like Brussels, for me, plays also a um, part of the film, like a fourth character, you can say. And it's also because I live in Brussels, so for me it was important to shoot it there because as a career director, for me, that's a space of the place where I grow and get inspired by. And also I felt like the career scene is different there than in other cities of Belgium. Um, and also like with the streets, because we, if we walk on the street, most of the time it's not the place where we feel safe or we, we're gonna hide ourselves. And for me, it was important to get them to give them that one night that they can really be themselves together and losing everything around them and be themselves. Um, and yeah, that was really important. And so for me, we went really searching to locations. Also, some locations are really important in Brussels that people recognize and know where it is and that they know like, okay, yeah, this is a 
place where people can possibly be more themselves and or maybe like other places where they don't feel comfortable that that people yeah that lives in Brussels recognize it. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah that's another still uh, from them. Um, yeah. Then yeah it's me now <laughs> It's uh, my next project. Um, I get like a few weeks ago to hear that I'm selected for a, a cat and dog. It's a children documentary uh, workshops with the Flemish audiovisual fonts. Um, I'm really at the beginning of the process, so I can't tell a lot about it. But I want to work with uh, also like um, gender diverse kids or teenagers. Because I felt now at this moment I want I like to work about identity and gender and I feel it's important to to work around these topics and if you see like now what's happening in the world like I have the feeling sometimes we go back like now in Italy or like also Belgium stands on the top two of LGBTQ friendly but in reality it's not what it's standing on paper it's a little bit a lie. But still, if we are top two, what are the other countries that I'm thinking? So I feel like it's important now at this moment for me to work around this for this, uh, the community and for that group, also for the children, because they are the future for me. They, they can change maybe, we hope, or we hope they can change something. Um, so I want to work with a small group of uh, uh, diverse uh, children that's going to to a travel to a new or an other planet where everyone is welcome and can be themselves and where they yeah gonna create something <coughs> together. Um, I'm still in the beginning of my processing. I'm doing uh, interviews and so I don't know what will be the end of, of maybe the whole setup will change. Um, I will see. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's also. <laughs> and then um, next to um, thank you. directing um, films, I did like to show who I am as a film director, or not a film director, but director. Um, I made a video clip um, for Joan. It's one of the actors of my film. Um, so these are stills about it. I, I like also like to play with colors and uh, to make a story with it. Um, also, be, uh, next week I work with uh, some uh, queer performance in Brussels, like this is Bali Karenzi, he's from Latvia, but live in Brussels now. Um, and I did like a performance for Le Bastard, it was in Corona, like online event uh, with performers. And um, thank you. Um, I shoot for them a video. Um, also with the track queen Sandra, also uh, from Brussels, and she organized queer upstage where queer performers can come perform, uh, yeah, can come perform of if they start, and that's what I'm doing next to the film. Uh, beside making a short film, um, I do this kind of small project besides. Yeah. And also next to that, I'm um, learning for myself because I found it really interesting um, visual effects um, I'm doing now. Uh, I'm feeling I want to maybe also for the next uh, documentary. I never made a documentary, by the way, so I'm excited about that. Um, but I, I feel maybe I want to go try something with 3D or visual effects. Um, and that's why I am start to learn it on a school in Belgium. Uh, for one year uh, to get better and know and I hope also in a way I can maybe make uh, 3D or visual effects uh, films also like conceptual films also with it um, so I'm also still experienced with uh, this medium so yeah. and that was it thank you very much Disturbing the screen. Thank you.
Well, thank you so much, Val. Again, if you have any questions, you can ask later. And we're going to move on to the next to last film, which is Land of the Free. It's a Swedish film by David David, David Ulgren. And it presents two points of view on homophobia and shows a variety of perspectives. Hello. 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 Uh, my name is David Algren, and I'm from Sweden, and uh, I'm nervous, so I'm sorry in beforehand. Uh, I'm trying to do as good job as I can, but a uh, good representation from all of you, so now I'm more nervous than you. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I, picked, uh, I took out some pictures from uh, like the shoot, but I will, uh, they are not necessarily going to uh, be what I'm talking about. So uh, it's more just yes, how we, when we were at the shoot. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I have directed this short film, uh, Land of the Free, or uh, Du gamla du fria in, in Swedish, which roughly means uh, you old, you're free. Uh, and it's the first line in the Swedish national anthem. Um, and the project started um, around from uh, three, four years ago. And I've just graduated from film school in Sweden. And uh, I knew that I wanted to do a new film. And I started to like research and figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, but I went, went on and I felt really, really angry as a person um, and I felt like uncomfortable being outside of my apartment and so on so I started to uh, think of okay why am I always angry um, and then I started to think about a uh, situation uh, that me and my partner were uh, uh, in the start of our, our relationship in like now nine years ago uh, when we were going out to take a picnic and uh, we stand at the uh, we stand at the bus stop and then uh, we kissed each other and then the car uh, stopped and uh, screamed that he would, you know, uh, kick our ass. Uh, and um, that really changed our relationship, uh, how we were outside of the apartment. We would like stop uh, holding hands and be more like um, straight acting in a way. Um, and it's still like affecting us in the, our relationship in that way. Uh, so. That was like, okay, I need to do something about this. It, in a way, you know, more like a therapeutic, therapeutic um, um, yeah, way of uh, dealing with it. So uh, I started to write a film that was more about uh, my anger. And it was like the same, more or less the same setting as the film is, which is that uh, we can change the uh, Which is, this is not, this is mood. Uh, but um, it's um, about uh, four uh, home gays who are uh, celebrating uh, one of them's 25th birthday and they are going to the beach to take a nightly swim and skinny dipping. Uh, so two of them going out uh, to uh, be at the water because they have a romantic thing together and two of them staying on the beach shore and uh, they're kissing also and then two straight couples walk by and possibly, possibly, uh, possible uh, homophobic remarks um, get after and then it's like explode into a uh, big uh, chaotic uh, discussion. Um, but the film from the beginning was more about my anger so the characters were more like um, uh, it was more uh, um, we are the we are the one who had who is right, and the straight one is the bad ones, and we hate them, and uh, we're gonna kick them at their ass and so on. It was more really about my anger, uh, uh, but it the film changed after I talked to my family or with my mother. Uh, she hates it when I'm telling this, but it it's true. Um, like uh, I, I talked. To, she wondered what, what my next film was about, and I'm uh, was talking about. Yeah, I want to do a film about how homophobic Sweden is. That we are thinking that we are so liberal, but we have like really 
long way to go before we are there that we think we are we already are uh, and her answer was that no but Sweden isn't homophobic uh, and for me that was so interesting uh, especially because she's a straight woman and um, uh, how how does she know uh, <laughs> but uh, but she was so firm with it she was so like no but we are we are past that and uh, so that big, like changed the whole film for me uh, where it, it wasn't anymore about my own anger, it was more about uh, how uh, the internalization, internalized homophobia and also uh, about um, uh, trying to figure out that all of them at the beach is right in, in their own way. So the film is more about the baggage that we are carrying uh, into every new kind of encounter, uh, so that it's like coloring every new um, meeting. So uh, the film isn't, or like uh, the things that happen in the film isn't really, it's not about the situation in itself, it's more about what happened before or what's going to happen after this situation. Um, it's a little, like, um, yeah, uh, you can change. So. The film is um, about perspective, <coughs> a different perspective. So I knew that I wanted to make a visual kind of attempt of uh, showing that, where I tried to be not as uh, partial to my like to the gay characters, trying to be like objective in a way, uh, but still uh, making a visual kind of uh, storytelling. So the film is uh, in split screen through the whole film. Uh, except for the last bit, uh, epilogue, um, where we like see from both we are in the water looking into the beach uh, and also being on the beach. So the, we we don't get the chance of like picking sides. We don't know really what's going on. We <coughs> just know the raw feeling that the all in the all characters is trying to like. Uh, yeah, the feeling of I'm right, that all of the eight characters, it's eight characters, all of them feeling that they are so right in their own um, uh, reading of the situation. And there's like the conflict of the film. Um, so, um, yeah, the film is in split screen and um, uh, I had an idea when uh, uh, as usual, when I think uh, when if, when I start a new film, I always feel like okay, I need to do something small. Just I, I just need to do something, and the film grew bigger and bigger, and it became my most ambitious film uh, with uh, eight characters, and uh, um, uh, we had water scenes, and uh, uh, and we had no money, uh, <laughs> so uh, it was. Uh, a challenge and um, the day before uh, it can change and um, yeah there's the team and me looking confused uh, <laughs> so we uh, shoot it in four days uh, at the hottest days in, in, uh, in Sweden that year which was awesome because it got really cold in the water uh, for the actors um, so we tried to make it as comfortable as possible for them. Um, and um, uh, yeah, we can change. Like now it's just gonna be like a couple of pictures here from <laughs> teams and so on, looking at the beach. Um, but we had, uh, uh, it was a bit of a, uh, in, during the shoot, we, we, we blocked it out, so we had like two days in the water and two days at the beach. And usually as, when I'm working, um, I like to take really long takes. So we did like, when we did the uh, big uh, rumble at the beach, uh, we, uh, there are like, uh, in the script there are like eight scenes probably, something like that. Man. But I punched them up and uh, we shot them like, in uh, every take, over and over and over again, in different kind of, uh, uh, for the DOP, different kind of focus. Uh, like, okay, now we're focusing on this character, and now we're focusing on that hand, 
during ten minutes of a scene and so on, trying to get uh, an intense feeling uh, when uh, as possible. Uh, because I knew that I was going to cut a lot in the film uh, to uh, um, to make it as intense as possible. I think you can just go in through like uh, every twenty seconds or something <laughs> like that. Um, and um, we um, actually during uh, the, the interesting thing that uh, happened during the short shoot that um, made me we get more uh, uh, convinced in my thinking about where we are in Sweden. Uh, we were. Uh, this was actually the king's uh, private beach that we got to rent, uh, which was nice of him. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, uh, we shot one of the nights when we had um, uh, uh, the hurricane. Uh, we like blocked the whole uh, entrance of uh, it was three entrances. And uh, a couple of teenagers, around 20 something, uh, came by and uh, wondered, like, oh, what's going on here? And then uh, a whole escalated in that, like, real life situation to a really homophobic kind of situation where they were started to scream at us and so on. Uh, and that uh, made us all in the th team, and uh, especially the actors, I think, to feel like, okay, but we are onto something here that we need to like um, it felt uh, uh, scary at the moment but also good that we are trying to make something here uh, because uh, now it wasn't just my own kind of feelings or my I have this like singular experience it was more about okay, a collective experience that we all had uh, that uh, uh, I think made the film better um, and uh, um, yeah, uh, the film um, has, uh, we shot it in 2019 and then it was ready in early 2020 and then Corona. Uh, so we have had uh, a lot of online screen, screens with it. Uh, this is the first time I'm uh, screening it in person, uh, international, which is, I'm super happy, thank you, thank you. Uh, this is my first, uh, third time uh, visiting Mesopata and fourth time uh, screening a film here, so I'm super happy. Um, and um, uh, the film got actually, uh, uh, won in Sweden uh, for the uh, Uppsala Short Film Festival, for Best Swedish Film, and it got nominated for our Academy Award for Best Short, uh, which I'm super proud of. I should have won, but <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> uh, 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 but, uh, so, it, yeah, uh, hopefully you get the chance to see it. I'm super happy about it. So, uh, now I'm working, it's me and my DOP, our uh, close collaborators. Uh, and uh, I'm now working and uh, hopefully going to do my first feature uh, next year, um, uh, which is uh, also uh, trying to be an intense kind of uh, thriller, psychological thriller, about uh, it based on real events in Sweden, uh, and it's called Date Robberies, and it's about an 18 year old guy who is using Grinder to uh, hook up with older men and rob them. Um, and uh, I worked on that film when during the shoot of this, and I think the both films are like kind of influencing each other. Um, yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, thank you. And we're going to move on to the last film, which is Eden, by Belgian filmmaker Sven Spa. And I've been told that Sven, unfortunately, is ill and can't be here. So I guess we will just play the trailer. Um, so I'll just say that it is a short film about casual encounters, 
sex, affection, and in general, intense experiences. So these have been all the short films, and now we've arrived at the section of the program where you can ask questions. So if you have any questions to any of the filmmakers here, um, feel free to raise your hand or shout at me. Yes. Hi, my name is Mahida. Um, I'm wondering why there is not one lesbian film or filmmaker. It's not that they were not invited, but it's that they couldn't come. Huh? They couldn't come. It's they not that they come. were not invited. We invited all the filmmakers. Okay. They were able to participate. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not that we selected a lot of Because I was really old feminist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wondering, not, is it coming? Is it coming? No, it's not that we share terrific. Okay. It's that we invite everyone. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I really love your look, by the way. You look amazing. I love your look. <laughs> okay, are there any other questions? Yes? Yeah, I have one thing. I'm glad it because, like, how's, how's the Swedish um, sort of, like, audience or society responding to someone about growing on Swedish homophobia? Like, is there any sort of reflection going on? And also, what about your mom? Uh, that's my question that I would just join. If your mom liked the movie, and if your mom, what your mom actually thinks about that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, uh, like how the mm, uh, my my feeling is that uh, the audience has responded well to the film. Mm -hmm. uh, is my or like that's what I the the other ones don't like it. Don't come up and say <laughs> say it to my face. But, uh, but my feeling is that the, the audience because the film in a sense is uh, as. In, from my point of view, uh, an effective short film that is uh, trying, that is really pushing, and uh, and it's a feel that you can see. It. It's not just about like the systemic like homophobia in Sweden. You can see it as in racism and sexism, and uh, uh, and I, uh, I I my I feel like uh, it uh, has responded well. Uh, uh, and it's uh, yeah, and my mother uh, uh, she liked it. Uh, we had a discussion afterward uh, um, about the film, and uh, um, I feel I, I it was it was nice that um, um, uh, she um, she could take part of the characters that were more in her age and could be more like okay understand. How they were reacting, and also consider consider it to her own way of thinking and viewing, and uh, I think that uh, it made some uh, progress. <coughs> Anyone else have a question? No. Okay. Well, I don't have a question, but I'm just gonna put it out there that if any of the filmmakers. Uh, <laughs> are looking for any queer or trans actors, I'm always available. No. <laughs> no, this is not about me, just, you know, <laughs> share the self-promotion. Um, so yeah, I think um, that's it. Uh, thank you all so much for coming. Make sure to check out the rest of the Mezipatra Festival program. And uh, thank you.